First, though, let's go straight to The Sun's deputy political editor, Ryan Saby, who's been looking at this story about, uh, about the payments from Azerbaijan, this Labour peer that's leading the charge in the Lords. I mean, how, how influential is he and what, how is that stopping the government's Rwanda plan? I think what Lord Goldsmith has tried to do over, over the past uh, few days or so, and we had the vote last night, is trying to put some, put some safeguards um, in place. But one thing that the investigation did do is, sh is shine this light on, uh, on his background and the, the declarations that he's made and, and the payments that he has taken from the Azerbaijan government. So when people talk about the human rights record of Rwanda, they can directly cross-refer that to, to that of Azerbaijan and, and make the comparisons. So what it does, it does, it does shine light. Like going through those records, there's thousands and thousands of pages and you really have to sort of dig through to find, to find it. Uh, in, it, people might say, you know, hypocrisy. Obviously, uh, if you're going to launch that human rights kind of attack uh, and say, you know, this, this Rwanda plan can't work because of this, people will begin to search through and, and point these things out. You know, we did have um, PM Sunet mounting this press conference last week to basically warn the House of Lords not to, quote, frustrate the will of the people. Um, that being said, the Lords still you know, shot down the first part last night of this treaty. There's more debate coming next week. Are they just not listening to the PM? I think that what, what the role of the House of Lords is a, is a revising chamber. They will look at the legislation and will try to make improvements. They realise that ultimately they're not, they're not going to stand in the way. They may try and frustrate slightly or delay. But even Lord Goldsmith himself says that you know we, we don't want this. This legislation will get on. We'll, you know, we'll get onto the statute book. So th there is a situation where. Uh, they'll look over every single line of this legislation, but ultimately it will go through. And the Commons has every right as that elected chamber um, to do that. And, you know, they, uh, to what I understand, the government, the Commons can even launch a kind of counterstatement to what was knocked down last night by the Lords. So we're at the start of a very long process and we'll just have to see how it makes its way through. Yeah, that's right. So the, uh, the, we had this, um, this motion passed and the government will have until... Um, till March to respond, but you, you can guess that they'll just, just ride roughshod over this and, and, and it will pass. It, it, it's not an issue. I don't think it's uh, at the top of uh, Rishi Sunak's intro at the moment. And just finally, uh, Ryan, we we're just listening to um, Starmer there speaking in, in the past about wanting to drop the House of Lords, the unelected second house, as it's sometimes called. How serious do you think he is? Do you think he would actually do that if he became prime minister? I think that came from a report from, uh, from, from Gordon Brown, who's very much into constitutional reform. And I think when you've got Gordon Brown, the former prime minister, sort of leaning on you, it's all very well a couple of years out from a, an election to, to talk this up. But I think the closer you get talking about abolishing the House of Lords in your first term or one of the first few things you do, you know, is for the birds. It's just not going to happen. This is something that you would look at. Maybe you would talk about maybe having a number limit, maybe 800 in the House of Lords, uh, getting rid of the hereditary peers, that kind of thing, simple steps. Uh, talking about abolishing the House of Lords is it, it, just not happening. But it might appeal to some. Look, Ryan Saby, Deputy Political Editor of The Sun, thanks very much. Let's bring in our other guests now. Talk to some lords, shall we, about this? Brave lords have joined us. The Conservative former Culture Minister, Lord Vasey, here in the studio. Our former Green Party leader, Baroness Bennett, down the line from Parliament. Thank you both, because I understand there is a vote ongoing this evening. So, uh, important that you could make time for this debate. Um, uh, starting with you, Ed, if you don't mind, here in the studio, you, you were listening to us there talking about the... This debate comes up often, whether it's to reform the House of Lords. Yeah, the whole yeah. point of legislation, just to remind our viewers, is it goes, bounces between the Commons and the yeah. Lords. Um, is it predictable that it would have come up around the Rwanda plan? Well, I thought I didn't think what Rishi Sunak said about the unelected Lords standing in front of the will of the people had any credibility at all, because the Lords' job is to revise legislation, whether it's legislation about parking tickets or legislation about asylum seekers. That's what we're there to do. I couldn't have appeared on this programme last night because I was in a bill committee, the Digital Markets and Competition and Consumer Bill. Uh, talking about amendments, intelligent amendments being put down by peers who know their subject. So a lot of the work in the laws is very unglamorous. Uh, of course, an unelected chamber in a 21st century democracy cannot be justified in any shape or form. Given it exists, it does its job, I think, very well. I'm a relatively new member of the Lords. But there is a practical problem with reforming the Lords, which Ryan sort of touched on a bit, which is... Uh, the minute, say, Keir Starmer put forward his alternative, people say, well, we like your alternative, Keir, but what, have you thought about alternative B, C, D, E, F? Mm. No-one would agree on the alternative. Plus, 
all the Labour peers would go to Keir Starmer, if you try this, son, uh, we're going to slow down your legislation. He'd be involved in massive buzzes. So there are lots of practical reasons. Uh, and Ryan is right, and I... I'm uh, interested to hear what my colleague says. You can do lots of piecemeal reforms, which would actually make the current unelected chamber certainly more palatable. Interesting. Let's go to your colleague, Natalie Bene Bar Baroness Bennett, joins us down the line. And, and first, I know you've been very outspoken uh, on the Rwanda plan so far. I've listened to what you were saying and the Lords there. But I just want to ask you on the reform subject, first reforming the Lords, uh, or abolishing it indeed. You've talked about that. Would you be keen to get rid of your own job? Absolutely, indeed. If you want to look at the Yorkshire Post when I came into the House four years ago, uh, the first uh, quote I gave them was I was aiming to abolish my own job uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but the fact is, of course, that we have many other problems with our British constitution beyond the House of Lords. The very strange thing, as it was demonstrated last night in the vote on the Rwanda Treaty, is that the House of Lords is actually more representative of the country than is uh, the House of Commons, because uh, Boris Johnson, you might remember him, you know, a few prime ministers back, um, he was elected in 2014, um, 2019, with 44% of the vote. The majority of people did not vote for Boris Johnson, uh, and he ended up with 100% of the power in the Commons. Whereas the House of Lords, the balance of power is still held by the crossbench peers, who were very vocal last night. Seven of them spoke, many of them respected former lawyers, respected human rights campaigners. Uh, and 35 crossbenchers, non-party people, uh, voted with the International Agreements Committee and I hate to throw a, a bucket of cold water over Ryan's story, but it is worth saying, and I'm no defender of Lord Goldsmith, but Lord Goldsmith was speaking as the chair of the International Agreements Committee, uh, representing 10 uh, peers, um, four of whom are Tory peers. And so he wasn't there as a Labour peer. He wasn't there as himself. He was representing that committee, which overwhelmingly found that we should delay the ratification of the treaty until Rwanda has demonstrated that it's made the changes promised. Uh, and I think it's important we get those facts down on the table. Uh, Baroness Bennett, thank you. And I want to give Ryan a chance to respond. And to clarify, it's not his story. He's very kindly agreed to come in and talk to us about this this evening. This uh, story was developed from in-house at Talk TV. Ryan is deputy political editor at The Sun, uh, but has been following the story. What's your response to that, Ryan? Yeah, I think that... Um, I think on, on, on Lord Goldsmith, I think one thing that... the the, uh, the, the story does do is just let everyone know exactly um, you know what money you know he has taken or the money he has, has declared and I think you know he's done that in the right way and Talk TV has just uh, exposed that and, and brought it to light. Uh, coming back to you Baroness uh, Bennett on that point but also on the point of reform so you, you talked about abolishing the Lords but is there not a case to be made for having legislation bounce between an upper and a lower chamber? Absolutely. I totally agree that the, we, a two chambers is the better system. What the Green Party wants is a fully elected upper chamber. Uh, the problem you encounter is if you do that, you elect it through a proportional representation, a fair voting system, as indeed the uh, members of the Labour Party have voted for uh, at Labour conference and said they want in the House of Commons as well, but Sir Keir Starmer has said he will not support. Um, if you had a, a fairly democratically elected House of Lords uh, and you left the Commons as it is, you would immediately have the most enormous constitutional crisis because the Lords would be more representative of the people than is the Commons. So what I would say is we have a constitution that's been arrived at by centuries of historical accident. Uh, as you rightly said in the introduction, we have the uh, unconscionable position of people being in the position in the House of Lords because of who their father was. Uh, we have most people there through patronage. We still have 26 bishops. Uh, of course, we need a democratically elected second chamber, but we also need a democratically elected main chamber. Ed, you're nodding along in the studio. Is that an idea you can get behind broadly? Well, I think Natalie makes some very uh, effective points. Um, all I would say is it, 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 that she's put her nub as well on the problem of getting from A to B, as it were, from getting from the unelected chamber to the elected chamber, which is the minute you have a, a second chamber that has its own legitimacy, as it were, uh, it becomes a real constitutional problem because when an elected House of Lords votes down the Rwanda bill in five years' time, for example, who are you going to call? Because if the Commons says, hold on, that's our bill you've just massacred, they'll say, well, so what? We're elected by the people as well, and you will get gridlocked. So you have to have... If you agree that there needs to be some kind of revision, weirdly, your revising chamber needs to be less legitimate than the elected chamber. So you can't get away from that fact. And the other point is, the minute Natalie puts that point forward, as I said, you can get 20 people in the studio 
who will have their own alternatives. Mm. And at that point, all prospect of changing the House of Lords is sunk. So you can do incremental I, I... reform, retirement ages, get rid of the bishops, get rid of the hereditary peers, term limits, limit the numbers. But changing it to an elected chamber, good luck with that. Baroness Bennett? I've got a solution for that, which is what we should do is, as I've said, the entire constitution is is totally outdated, totally undemocratic, totally dysfunctional. And I think if we uh, if you went and surveyed 100 people on the street to, tonight, uh, you'd find almost all of them would agree that our politics is broken. And it's not just the fault of individuals, much as I blame many individuals for what they've done. We have a system that's not working. We also have a huge concentration of power and resources in Westminster. Um, and that's a real problem. We need much more power and resources out uh, in local areas. So what we need to do is call the People's Constitutional Convention, get a representative group of people from all around the country, give them the chance to deliberate on how we can go forward uh, and draw up a modern democratic functional constitution. Uh, and that gives you a mechanism to go forward uh, covering both the Lords and the Commons. Fascinating uh, stuff. Uh, I want to bring in Ryan uh, on this because you and I, Ryan, we are mere people, journalists, <laughs> not Lords. And when I listen to Lord Vasey and Baroness Bennett discussing this, they made some really sensible suggestions, but it's a lot about constitution there's a lot of fine print in this and I'm thinking about the voting public and what they might want and we can understand why people say no I hate the idea of the Lords or I do or I don't in terms of the way the general election is going to go this year do you think Starmer or Sunak are going to seize on it more from here I think that there'll be a very very limited time um, dedicated to the House of Lords reform I do, it may get a slight mention that it got a very small mention in the 2019 Tory manifesto just because there aren't very many votes in it um, people are more interested in the cost of living, how much money they have in their pocket, immigration, the NHS waiting list. That's the thing that's going to win votes. You can include it in your manifesto, but it's, it's not, they're not going to focus on it. You're not going to have any big press conferences or set pieces about it um, come what, at the end of the year. OK, well, Lord Vays, you get to keep your title for now. Baroness Ben, I'm afraid you get to keep your title for now, but <laughs> if you're successful, you may find yourself losing it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, interesting discussion.